Hello there. In response to quite a few requests, this is a very short video just outlining a few basic lamping techniques. It's winter, the nights are dark, but there's still plenty of vermin about. Unless you've got a lamp, you're going to find it very hard to shoot them on a night. So by following these few tips, you should be able to shoot more efficiently and increase your bag. So firstly, quick equipment check. For lamping, obviously you need a lamp. This is quite an old one. I've actually had this for about ooh, 15 years or so. Uh, it's by Clue Light, it's a million candle power. I do believe they still make them. Uh, it comes with a battery pack, which you carry about. I do know that you can get ones that you wear on a belt, which sounds like a better idea altogether. This tends to swing around a little bit and is pretty bloody heavy. Belt, better option. The lamp sits nicely on the gun. There's actually a special bracket that you can get. Clips around the tube of your scope. When you want, when you want to attach the light, all you do is just screw it on the top. This attachment stays screwed on to your scope all the time. I've actually got one on my 1.7, which is this gun, and a one on my 2.2, so I can just quickly change lamps, say I'm going rabbit shooting, I use the 2-2, say I'm after long range rabbits on a night possibly, and also foxes, I'd use the 1-7. Ideally, I suppose you'd want to use a, a bigger rifle for longer range foxes, I tend to get them pretty short range around here, 1-7, nice little tool for the job. This particular gun, it's all kind of tripped out with a lovely thumb hole stock, Forget about that, that's not important. It's just nicer to use if you have a nice thumbhole stock with a high cheek plate, drops your eye on the scope nicely. You don't have to have that. What you do have to have is a pretty accurate scope. Make sure it's set, set it during the daytime. The last thing you wanna do is get out somewhere, right out in the middle of nowhere and find out that your scope isn't set. So set it during the day before you go, get your eye in then go out. You've got a silencer, well, sound moderator on there. You're shooting on a night, you don't want to disturb anybody, especially if there's villages nearby. This helps to cut down on the noise. If you've got a silencer on a 2-2, it makes it almost inaudible. As soon as I use this for foxes, I've got a bipod with extendable legs. When I've seen a target, drop these legs out, lie down, makes for a really, really steady shot. So make sure your scope is set, nicely zeroed in, and also make sure that your battery's charged. In the early days, I used to go out many times thinking I had a full charge of the battery. Would go 15, 20 miles away from home, switch the lamp on, get five minutes use, and then it would die. No good at all. Right, so you've got the equipment. Now you need to know a few basic techniques. Firstly, it's important to understand what lamp and actually is. It involves shining a very high powered lamp at an animal, blinding it, i.e. taking away its night vision, not physically blinding it, but taking away its night vision and therefore confusing the animal, startling it, if you will, a bit like a rabbit in the headlights sort of thing and then shooting it. So the first thing to do is pick a nice bit of land. I've actually got some nice land around me. It's good and hilly but there are houses there. It's very important to go out during the day, have a few shoots during the day, familiarize yourself with where the footpaths are, where there's any like country car parks, where there's any houses, if there's any stock in the fields, Check with a farmer before you go out lamping. Is there any stock in any particular field? Do you not want me to go where there's cows or whatever? Very important, you don't want to upset the farmers. Then when you're out, really, you're ready to shoot. So imagine I was shooting in this back field here. I'd creep up from my house, which is about 100 yards that way. Very quietly get over the fence. Not using the lamp to get here.
These techniques kind of relate to solo lamping. I tend to go out by myself. Obviously, if you're with somebody, make sure that they are also quiet. They're not smoking. Uh, for one, the animals can see the little red glow. They can smell the stink of tabs. Not a good idea. So this is for solo lamping. I've climbed over the fence very quietly into the field. Flick the lamp on. Have a quick scan round. Switch the lamp off. Leave it five, ten seconds. And then I would squeak like this. Flick the lamp back on again. Another quick scan around. And if I didn't see any eyes, I would give it maybe 20, 30 seconds and repeat that process. If I didn't see anything after that, probably just move on to the next field. If I flick the lamp on after squeaking and I see a set of headlights shining back at me, fox, up in the next field, I would get into position, quietly drop the legs of the bipod, lie down, chamber around, flick the lamp on again, keeping it above the fox, just to check it was there, quickly switch it off again, and then start squeaking. The fox heard me squeaking the last time, so I make it a little bit quieter this time. And I think that often tricks the fox into thinking, oh Christ, it's going to get away, it's going down a hole, it's getting weaker, whatever's attacking that particular thing that I'm representing with the, the squeak is going to get out of my reach, unless I bolt towards it. So as soon as I squeak, the fox is either going to sit there and think, what the hell's that? It's going to run away, or it's going to come towards me. Assuming it's coming towards me, I'd give it, depending on the distance, 5, 10, 15, 20 seconds. Flick the lamp back on again, check out where it's at. If it's heading off in the wrong direction, lamp off. Another squeak, bring it back in the right direction. Keep repeating that until it's within range. Flick the lamp on, and if the fox is still moving, I'd probably just go, Wah! or make some other strange, quiet noise like that. It would stop it for a second, then I could take the shot. Quite often, if there's young foxes, they'll really bolt towards you. They'll come so quick that you have to actually shout to stop them. And always try and keep the lamp just above the fox so it's not shining directly in its eyes. Same goes for rabbits as well. To be honest, lamp and rabbits is pretty easy. They tend to just sit there. If you get between them and their hole, i.e. there's a wood behind me here. Imagine all the holes are in this wood. All the rabbits are out here feeding. If I can get here, between the holes and the rabbits, I could just sit there and pick my targets. Pretty easy. Same when you're out in the vehicle. You generally drive along the fence line, cut the rabbits off, isolate them in the field, and then just clean them up. For foxes and a lesser extent rabbits, you really want to consider three important factors. They don't want to see you, they don't want to smell you, and they don't want to hear you. We've already gone through being quiet, but we haven't mentioned the other ones. They don't want to see you. You want to wear dark clothing, camouflage, black clothes or whatever. There's no point wearing day glow orange because if you step out into a field and that animal has got its night vision, it's going to see you straight away. You're going to stand out like a sore thumb. So dark clothing, pretty important. Less important if you're in a car or some other sort of vehicle driving around in the field shooting rabbits not as important, 
But if you're out by yourself lamping, treat it as you would a daytime hunt. Mm. Smell? Rabbits and foxes don't want to smell you. Foxes in particular, they've got a very, very good sense of smell. And that's why hunting on a particular area during the day will give you some idea of where the wind blows from, where your good sniping points are, and you can use that to your advantage. If you've got a fox downwind of you, unless it's a young one, it's very hard to get it to come towards you if it can smell you. Normally, i.e. 99% of the time, as soon as they get a whiff of you, they're away. That said, avoid deodorants, aftershave, basically all the crap that makes you smell really nice will make you smell really horrible to a fox and it'll run away. Now going back to rabbit shooting, generally if I'm out rabbit shooting, I step out into a field, loads of rabbits out there, I'm between them and the, the holes, the rabbits 99 times out of 100 will clap down, or at least some of them will. The ones that look like they're going to run, they're the ones I generally take first, followed by the closest ones and then moving on to the further away ones. If a rabbit looks like it's going to bolt, it's always best to take that one out first. There's no point having, say, ten rabbits in front of you, five of them clap down, five of them looking like they're going to run. As soon as you shoot one on the ground that's clapped down, that would have stayed there anyway, the five that were going to run will probably run. You might as well try and take one or two of those out before you get the ones that are clapped down in the grass. But if you're shooting rabbits and there's two of you out, one of you using the lamp, the other one using the gun, if there's a rabbit running away, say there's one, you had the lamp on there, you're just about to take a shot and it starts to run across the bank side. If you take the lamp, wave it backwards and forwards in front and behind the rabbit, it can often confuse it. It's these shadows moving around. It can't, quite, quite often it can't run in a straight line. Quick flash, and it often stops. That gives you one, possibly two seconds to take the shot. You do have to be quick. Once the rabbit's decided to run, once you stop it, that's when you need to take your shot. If it runs again, quite often it doesn't stop. And because my camera, my video camera, doesn't work very well on a night, obviously I'm explaining all this during the day, but uh, hopefully the little bits of information I've given you there will be of some good use. Just remember, stay safe and have a good hunt. Thanks for watching. And check out my other shooting videos. I've got a playlist called something or other, shooting and fishing, I think it's called. Something like that. Loads of shooting videos on there. Nothing actually getting shot. There's nothing on there actually getting shot because I don't want to offend the bean-eating communists that tend to target these sorts of videos. So. If I can give you information on how to improve your craft, that's good enough for me. Don't have to see things getting blown up. So check those other videos out. Thanks for watching.